couple of weeks ago I did a talk at a camera club and one of the questions that I got at the end of it was how much of my time living in the Far East has influenced my kind of creativity and my aesthetic uh, appreciation uh, and so forth. So what I want to do today is talk a little bit about uh, the influences of Chinese and Japanese art on Western photography and also what some of those concepts mean in terms of things like using negative space and simplification and kind of stripping down landscapes into their bare component parts. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. So uh, yeah, let's dig into a bit of Zen. So one of the things about composing scenes like this is first of all, choosing the type of, um, the type of scene to shoot. What makes a shot a good candidate for this type of minimalistic art. Now obviously foggy conditions are fantastic. The second thing we have here is there is no wind, it's completely calm. They're the perfect reflections and the way that uh, line of land with the trees on it kind of just diffuses off to the right hand side of the frame there. There's a journey there, there's somewhere for the eye to go. In the final photograph here, what I've tried to do is just distill this down to nothing. Uh, I've reduced contrast, I have reduced, uh, I've made the shadows medium, you know, not too dark. You don't want, you, you want minimal contrast in these scenes. And I've made the highlights and the whites quite bright. So it's very high key. As the light developed, we started to get a bit more warmth coming through. And as soon as you get that injection of warmth and the fog dissipated slightly and we could start to see the mountains behind, oddly enough, particularly in the reflections there. And this is higher contrast. It's instantly higher contrast. By making it a 16 by nine, the impact that we've had there is that we have made it more expansive. We have longer lines, we have more energy, the warm light, creates more energy, the contrast creates more energy. And what I've tried to do is I've kept it subdued in terms of the fog luminosity. I didn't want the fog to be too bright. I guess just very, very quickly, if I was to grab in a gradient here and just pull that in and make it very gradual and just increase that slightly, and then I'll have to dampen down the top a bit. Just with the highlight slider. I don't mind that little bit of clipping there. If I turn off that, that was the original that we had and that very quick luminosity increase has lightened the mood of the image. If we look at it how it was originally, it was quite somber. The left hand side had the warm light and the luminosity. The right hand side is somewhat dim. If we think of that as an emotional gradient, we've got all the energy and happiness on the left hand side and it's a bit somber and melancholy on the right hand side. By increasing the luminosity on the right there, we lift the mood of the photograph. So there's two th things that are going to be our main assets here. The first is the combination of elements that are sympathetic to what it is that we're trying to articulate. Images like this are typically associated with calmness, kind of spirituality, uh, kind of an ethereal nature, heavenly almost. They should certainly be calm, they should certainly be relaxing. We think about Japanese gardens, we think about Zen, we think about meditation, uh, we think about sitting cross-legged in the mountains. You know, this type of art is associated with spirituality uh, to a certain extent. So what we're doing here is we're looking at elements that are complementary to what it is we're trying to articulate. So. First of all, we've got fog. The second thing is we have no wind. So if you think about those two things in isolation, wind is a chaotic, energetic element. It whips up waves, it blows clouds, it makes trees and vegetation rustle. It certainly creates ripples on water. So it's a disruptive element. Uh, it ha can be soothing in its own way, but essentially from a compositional point of view, it's going to be counterintuitive to what it is we're trying to say. So we have calmness, we have fog, we have simple elements. So we have in this particular composition, reeds, which are obviously not moving in the wind, 
and in the distance there we've just got this very gentle hillside which in itself is a soothing element. There are no hard lines in this photograph. Uh, any of the photographs I'm making there are no hard things. Uh, everything's gentle, everything's soft, everything's diffused and the light in the back there is starting to warm up as we approach uh, the, the end of the day. So the light is naturally very very soft, it's quite pink, it's a little bit warm in some areas but it's quite cool in others and it's definitely going to be one of these photographs that once we get it into Lightroom we can use those cool and warm tones but desaturate everything so everything's very pastel and we don't want anything loud in this. I've talked many times in processing before, volume control, contrast, detail, clarity, uh, all of those things, black points and white points uh, won't be coming into this photography. We are talking about subtle. Um, so a stunning place, beautiful, beautiful moment. Uh, the loch is partially frozen, there's ice forming up underneath all the reeds. It's a truly stunning place in beautiful conditions. Uh, so yes it is very zen like and very calming uh, and yeah i'm definitely getting my buddha face on now this is a, another photograph of quite minimal elements and it takes a certain amount of conviction to photograph things like this because a lot of people are going to look at it as boring um, it's a repetitive pattern of um, elements here which are all these reeds dried dead reeds with a bit of ice underneath and then they've got this very diffused foggy trees in the background it like i said it takes a certain amount of conviction to put this out there into the world and say this is my work now the irony is when it comes to selling prints it's things like this that people put on their walls because they're reflective and you can live with this day by day because you see all sorts of different things in it every day there's more imagination required by the time you get to high impact contrasty photographs of dramatic scenes they can get a wee bit tiring after a while so these are, are quite contemplative and these work beautifully if you want to start writing your own haikus or your own portrait to go alongside your photography i did this about four years ago where every photograph i produced I produced a poem to go along beside it and it was a very interesting time for me because the words that were forming in my mind as I was processing the images came out as a natural flow, a natural rhythm, uh, metaphors, similes, uh, visions of um, of emotion would come through in in the poems uh, so yeah there's, there's a great correlation I think between what we see and what we feel and how we want to articulate those things and sometimes the photograph just isn't quite enough I love this type of photography I really do and, and whether it was the amount of time I spent in the Himalaya or living in China that's had an influence on me or whether there's just a bit of me that likes simplicity and calmness and order and harmony uh, I'm not entirely sure it's not, it's not really easy for me to say anymore uh, I'm 54 years old and I'm kind of the product of an awful lot of living and um, one of the things I want to point out in places like this though Composition is a distillation of our experience. The way we see the world is big. We see everything and it's very easy for the world to be a very cluttered place. There's nothing better than an 80 to 400 or a long lens to strip down the world into these tiny slices. Uh, the, the shot I've got here at the moment just now with the mountain, the point on the mountain on the right hand side and just that solitary little group of trees down in the bottom left. There's a harmony and a journey in there and I think this is the thing that simplified art is really good at doing is making very simple profound statements and in a world filled of shouting and complexity and arguing and bitterness and division I think if we can find harmony and beauty and simplicity when we're looking through the the viewfinder of our lens or of our cameras rather that is quality living and I think we can't underestimate how important 
in this day and age, quality living, creative living can actually be for our state of well-being. And these photographs make me feel calm. Being here makes me feel calm. And talking to you folks about this makes me feel a, a degree of hope that I hope that I can share some of this enthusiasm I have for this style of living. And it doesn't, okay, we're living in this beautiful place, but there's beauty in many, many places that we can find quiet and calm. Now, this is another example of seeing how uh, the contrast reduction caused by the fog has such a profound impact on the way photographs feel and the types of things that we can articulate them with. The image of the left, very foggy, uh, very diffused, very low contrast, um, very little colour. It's a cool photograph. The fog was diffusing a lot of that light and making it feel quite cool. As the fog started to recede down the loch, the mountain there in the background started to come through. It becomes a much more dynamic thing in the frame. The light warmed up as sunset was starting to come. The fog sinks down into the bottom of the frame. These are very gently processed. I've hardly done anything to them at all. But the one on the left, the simplification of the trees and the very subtle depth of the, of the pointy mountain in the background Oddly enough, I kind of prefer it, even though the one on the right has more contrast, more impact and more warmth to it. Um, I somehow like that simplicity on the left hand side. Uh, it's a no brainer to say which one would be more popular on social media just because it's more colourful and more contrasty. So we'd actually finished making the video and uh, the, the thing about making those types of videos is that you're very focused on the conditions as they are and we had all this fog and it was really amazing. And what's happening now as we get near to sunset is that the fog is starting to dissipate and move down the loch again and it's opened up this area that we started the video on and if you remember looking back to the start we just had this single line of trees in the fog kind of just isolated in space and what we've got now is is we've got these layers of contrast again and it's much more a big landscape and it's very very beautiful but it it's got a completely different i'm going to use the word emotional fingerprint to the previous images that we've been making. Very, very different. We've got blacker blacks, we've got deeper shadows, we've got more contrast, we've got more dynamic light. It's a very, very different type of photograph. And this just goes on, I think, to emphasize the point I've made so far in this, in this video, is that the photographs that we make are, they have their own wishes. They have their own, um, uh, message in them and it's up to us to be respectful to those messages quiet and calm means quiet and calm contrasty and dynamic is saying something else so uh yeah it's it's a it's a it's an artistic creative pastime for all nuances of experience and landscape. Uh, so I, I just wanted to say how blessed I'm feeling that I get to do this for a living. Now, if there was ever a change of vibe, uh, it was on this particular day. Uh, as you could see there in the film, we had finished the video uh, and we had come back to where we'd started. And these are the trees that we saw in the very first photograph, almost invisible in a big blanket of fog. Now, as the mist has headed off down the loch again, we're in this situation where we've got this beautiful, grand, calm vista of uh, beautiful serenity, but it's very high contrast. We've got the setting sun off to the left there, so we've got dark, moody shadows. This is a single exposure with the Nikon D850. The dynamic range is all contained. There was no clipped shadows, no clipped highlights. Uh, and it's a very beautiful photograph. Now, the irony is that these types of photographs are the things that stir our emotions the most. Uh, we see high contrast, we see atmosphere, we see beautiful colours. 
the 16 by 9 panel format gives this feeling of expansiveness and grandeur. These are all the things I talk about in the psychology of how we put our images out there into the world. People respond to expansiveness, people respond to warm, cool colour transitions, people respond to contrast, people respond to the geometry and the atmosphere that's in our photographs. So this photograph, uh, of all the photographs that I made on this particular day, and if I just put them all up on the screen there together, we can see how the brain is going to zone in on the one with the most contrast. So we see this one, uh, this one stands out, this one stands out, and actually the, the reed stands out. The two with the least contrast, which are the first photo on the left there, and this photograph on the right there, those two are the most zen-like in a way. They're very calm, they're very contemplative, they're very introspective, they're not loud, they're not shouting, they're not making strong opinions. It's delicate and thoughtful. The images with more contrast are more impactful, more forceful, louder. Um, and obviously people engage with contrast. These types of things are hugely important uh, and how we present our photographs has such a massive impact on how viewers perceive them but we cannot throw everything into the melting pot of external judgment. We have to understand that we can make quiet photographs to say quiet things to ourselves. They're more like inner thoughts. If we choose to share those inner thoughts with other people we have to be very selective about who we decide to share them with. So once again, thank you very much for watching. I hope you find uh, my ranting and raving about the inner zen of landscape photography to be of value to you. Thanks for watching. Tune in again next week for more expressive landscape photography. Bye for now. We're finished now. Cut, cut, cut. <laughs>